Hi, I've got a torques problem for you today. And so we're going to be dealing with equilibrium where all the forces have to add up to zero and all the torques have to add up to zero as well. Our problem is a beam problem with a hinge in it. So this is a closer to an A-level problem. A 1,000 Newton uniform beam is attached to a vertical wall at one end with a hinge and is supported by a cable at the other end. The beam is angled at 30 degrees above the horizontal, and the cable at the far end is angled upward, makes a 40 degree angle with the wall. An 80 kilogram crate hangs from the far end of the beam. Find the tension in the cable and the forces of the hinge on the beam. All right. As with all of our problems, I'm going to start with a picture, and I'm going to have to try to make sense of this word problem here. So we have a beam attached to a vertical wall at one end, supported by a cable at the other end. The beam is angled at 30 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so I'm going to say my beam is like that, and this is 30 degrees. The cable is angled upward, and the cable is attached here. The cable is, cable is angled upward and makes a 40 degree angle with the wall. Okay. So, 40 degree angle with the wall. Alright, that's what I'm seeing so far. An 80 kilogram crate hangs from the far end of the beam. Find the tension in the cable and the forces of the hinge on the beam. Alright, we have our picture. I'm going to do my knowns and my unknown. The weight of the beam and I was in newtons, so that's a weight, 1,000 newtons. Vertical wall, blah, 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 beam is angled at 30, this makes 40. What else do we know? 80 kilogram crate. So the mass of the crate, not the weight, the mass of the crate is 80 kilograms. And with uh, torque problems, I almost always right away convert that to a weight because we're going to need the weights. Um, do I have that number right here? Yes, 784. You can do it later if you want, but I tend to just do it early. And we want to know what the tension is, and we want to know the forces of the hinge in the x direction, and the forces of the hinge in the y direction. Okay, so far it's like our standard force problems. Now with a torque problem, we make a slightly different force diagram. We make a force diagram that we call an extended force diagram because with torques, it matters where the forces act. So I'm going to draw the object of interest, the beam in this case, and I'm going to draw the forces that act on it, just like normal, but I'm going to show on the beam where the forces act. And that's what we call an extended force diagram. All right, so here's my beam, and what forces act on the beam? Well, the beam has gravity acting on it. I should say the earth pulling down on it. So there's the weight of the beam. It has the cable pulling up on it. So that's tension. This box is pulling down on it. And if you want to go through and, and make the specific calculations to say that the tension in this is equal to the weight of the cable you can, but I think at this point we're, we all should be pretty comfortable with saying that the tension in this cable is equal to the weight of the box, the crate, because it's at equilibrium. Be careful. That's only true because it's at equilibrium. And now the hinge is also exerting forces on the beam, and we're going to separate those out by vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal forces. What direction do we think they're going to be in? Horizontally, if I look at this, I say there's a force to the left and nothing balancing it out. So I can make a pretty good guess that the force of the hinge in the x direction is going to the right because it's got to balance out that leftward force. In terms of up down, it's harder to tell. Make your best guess. I have two downward forces and an upwards force. I'm just going to make a guess that the hinge is exerting an upwards force as well. Don't worry too much about making that guess um, because if you guess the wrong direction, you'll just get a negative sign. And that negative sign tells you, oh, I guessed up, it's actually down. So don't worry too much about those. If you don't know on the hinge, make your best guess. And I think that's all the forces we have acting on the beam. 
I don't see it interacting with anything else. It interacts with the cable, the crate, and the wall, and the earth. Okay, we got it. We have our extended force diagram, and now we have to pick our pivot point. You want to pick a pivot point that gets rid of the most unknowns in your equation. I know this, I know this, this I don't know, this I don't know, this I don't know. You also can pick your pivot point to be the natural pivot. If this beam were to pivot, it would be pivoting around this point. So I'm going to say because this is the natural pivot point and because if I put my pivot right here, it gets rid of two forces, that this would be a good choice. So I'm going to put my pivot right here. That's my pivot point. We can choose our coordinate systems and for forces, I tell you to choose a coordinate system based on the acceleration. Well, there's no acceleration. So what kind of coordinate system should I choose? Should I choose straight on? Should I choose angled? This is where I look at the forces. That's straight up, that's straight down, that's straight down, that's straight right. I only have one force angled if I use a coordinate system like this. I'm going to choose for forces a straight on coordinate system. And then I'm just going to remind myself that for torques, a clockwise torque is a negative and a counterclockwise torque is positive. Okay, so at this point, instead of going straight to the XY chart, I'm going to open it up by doing the sum of the torques. And the net torque has to equal zero. So equilibrium, if this thing is not moving, we have to have all the forces add up to zero and all the torques have to add up to zero. Let's do our torque equation. So the net torque, oops, <laughs> can you see that I've been doing forces a lot? Um, that's the net force, which is also true, but not the one I want to do right now. The net torque has to equal zero. The other way to write this is the sum of the torques is equal to zero. They're the same equation. Now I have five forces. So I could have as many as five torques. How many of these forces actually produce a torque? So torque is the perpendicular force times the distance at which it's acting. For these two forces, the hinge forces, they are at the pivot point. So my distance from pivot is zero. These two do not cause a torque. This one here does have a perpendicular component. This one has a perpendicular component. This one has a perpendicular component. I have five forces, but only three torques. All right, so my net torque equation, or my sum of the torques equation, is only going to have three torques in it. Let's figure out what they are. OK, so the sum of the torques is going to look like, oh man, so it's the perpendicular force. Let's start with this one. The distance at which it acts, my R for this, is right here. I need the part of the force that's perpendicular to that. So I need this part right here. Um, and let's see. Oh, here's where we get into our, <laughs> our trigonometry. If this is 30, okay, that's 30 there. That means this is 60, which means that one is 30 as well. Okay, so this is 30 as well. I want this side because it's perpendicular to the, the radius vector, and that's the adjacent. So the force that I'm dealing with is the weight of the beam. The component of it is the cosine of 30. Um, the distance is, well, shoot. We don't know how long the beam is. OK. Again, like mass in force problems, if they're not given how long the beam is, we probably are going to have the length of that beam cancel out. So I'm just going to call it L for now and say, let's hope it cancels out. So where does this force act? What is the distance to where the force acts? Well, it's half the length. So I'm going to say the distance, the R part, is half the length of the beam. And I made a little space here because I have to figure out if it's positive or negative. So I'm going to, this is my pivot point. This force is trying to make the beam rotate this way. That is a clockwise torque negative. So negative mg cosine theta times 1 half L. All right, that takes care of this torque. 
here we have another force that causes a torque. Luckily, can you see, it's very similar. I don't have to do all this stuff again because, again, it's going to be a negative torque. The force is the weight of the crate. Uh, it's going to be cosine 30 again for that perpendicular component because that's the part I want. And now the distance at which this acts is the full length. And that's that one. Okay, so that force I've taken care of, that force I've taken care of. Now I need to take care of the torque due to the tension. So my radius vector is like this. I need the component of the tension that's perpendicular. So in this case, I need this part. All right, what is this angle going to be? Holy smokes. We're going to have to do some math here. Um, if this is 30, then this is 60. We're told that's 40, so this is 50 degrees here. Because that's my right angle. That's my right angle. If this is 60, this is 30. Whew. Okay, so the angle here is 80 degrees from the cable to the beam. All right. Now, if that angle there is 80, do I want the sine or the cosine component? I want this piece, which is opposite the angle, so I'm going to want the sine of the 80. Okay, I ran out of room. So is this one going to be positive or negative? If I'm holding this constant, this tug is going to make it go this way, which is positive torque, counterclockwise. Okay, so it's a positive torque. The force is the tension. The component, I said, was the sine. And the distance at which it acts is the full length. All right, five forces, three torques, one, two, three, equals zero. And often I stop and say, okay, if this has to equal zero, I can't have all negatives or all positives. I have a negative, negative, positive. This can balance out to zero. All right, because that's one of the ways you can double check if you have your signs right. If they're all one sign, it'll never add up to zero. So let's see what we've got here. All right, what are we looking for again? <laughs> T, we're trying to solve for T. I don't know this. Okay, so I know my weight, I know angle, I don't know length, I know weight, angle, I don't know length. I'm looking for this, I know angle. There's a length in every term. All three terms have a length in them. So, shoop, 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 they're gone. I'm going to rewrite it. Minus mg of the beam, cosine 30 times 1 half, don't lose that 1 half, minus mg of the crate, cosine 30 plus t sine 80 equals 0. All right, now in this equation, I know absolutely everything but the tension. So I can put my numbers in. This is, my physics is done. Now it's just a question of putting the, uh, the numbers in and solving for the tension. And I solved for a tension of 1129 newtons, so 1130, which is reasonable for, uh, the beam itself weighs a thousand newtons. So a tension around a thousand newtons seems quite reasonable to me. So I've answered the first question. Now how do I get FHX and FHY? There are two paths you can take. You can choose a different pivot point, like maybe here, and try to solve for our unknowns. Um, because now we know T, oh yeah, we got rid of two knowns though. We'd still have two unknowns and only one equation. Okay, so that won't work. Um, so the better way to do it is to go back to the other condition for equilibrium. We have the net force has to, e I just said, did it again. We have the net torque equaling zero. We also know that the net force has to equal zero or the other way to write it, the sum of the forces has to equal zero. So the two conditions for equilibrium, torques have to add up to zero forces have to add up to zero. I've dealt with the torques, which gave me this equation. Now I want to use the forces adding up to zero to see if I can solve for the hinge forces, which means I have to erase. All right, now I have two unknowns and I only see one equation here. So if I have two unknowns, I have to have two equations in order to solve for it. So how is the force going to help me? Well, just like every force problem we did, even though we have one equation, we have two directions for forces. 
So the forces, I'm going to add them up in the x direction, set them equal to zero. I'm going to add them up in the y direction, set them equal to zero. And there's my two equations. And let's see if that gets it to me. All right, so we're dealing with the forces. And I made a good mess of this force diagram. OK, I had five forces. So here I'm going to go x, y. And if you want to skip this because you're comfortable skipping the x, y chart, you can. In the x direction, oh boy, so I have five forces. OK, that is all in the y direction, positive y direction, f, h, y. That's all in the positive x direction, f, h, x. That's all in the negative y direction, the weight of the beam. That's all in the negative y direction, weight of the crate. And now I have to figure out what that is. All right. Now here we have to be careful because I no longer care about my angles to the beam. I'm using my standard coordinate system, which is why these are just all x or y. So instead of the tension breaking up in coordinates next to the beam, I need to break that tension force up, oh boy, into my standard xy components. So I need to know what this angle is. And again, it's not the angle to the beam, it's the angle to hor true horizontal. But I already have that. So the angle to true horizontal is 50 degrees. OK, so then tx and ty. The x direction is going to the left, so I don't have room. Minus t adjacent cosine 50. And the y is going up, so it's a positive t sine 50. All right. Here's my xy chart. And again, if you're comfortable enough at this point to skip the xy chart, you can. Net force in the x direction has to add up to zero. There's only two forces. We have a positive hinge force in the x direction, minus t cosine 50 equals zero. All right, got it. The hinge force in the x direction is t cosine 50. I already solved for t. So the hinge force in the x direction in, ends up being 726 newtons. Sorry about the squeaking. Now in the y direction, FHY, positive, minus the weight of the beam, minus the weight of the crate, plus T sine 50 has to add up to 0. So there's my second equation. I need a bigger board, clearly. There's my second equation. I know, I'm looking for this. I know that, I know that, I know that. All right, so if you put in your numbers, you solve for FHY equals 1,019 newtons. So there's my final answer for that one. All right, I have answered the question. I figured out the tension using the torques, and then I figured out my hinge forces using the forces. So this is a good A-level problem where you have to use both of them in order to figure it out. And there's a lot of angles, and there's a lot of weird <laughs> components that we have to keep track of. So this would be closer to an A-level question. I think we've got everything answered. Yep, tension, FHX, FHY. Everything seems reasonable because, you know, if the weight is 1,000 newtons, having all my forces be in the range of 1,000 newtons seems quite reasonable. Okay, I think we got it. Nice job.